Mr Finn. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr uh, Acting uh, President. I, I rise to speak on the, uh, the budget and, um, and can't help but remark that um, whilst there might be some around who are uh, very pleased with the budget, uh, future generations will not be. Because the one thing that this budget leaves more than anything else is a huge debt. And that debt will have to be paid one day. This is like uh, somebody, somebody, perhaps a, a child, who has just discovered uh, uh, a wonderful new device called a credit card uh, and has, has run amok with that credit card without any care as to who will have to pay the bill. The tragedy is that at some stage, somebody will have to pay the bill. And that will be our kids, that will be our grandkids, and maybe it will be our great-grandkids. Because uh, uh, at, this, at this point in time, uh, in four years' time, we will have a debt uh, of somewhere in the vicinity of $155 billion. $155,000 million. Now, that, that is an extraordinary legacy, an extraordinary legacy to leave future generations uh, in this state. Now, you know, Daniel Andrews will say, uh, uh, I, I've done this and I've done that and I've spent this. And I mean, that, that's the, that, that is the, the, the good old fashioned socialist way of doing things. Um, you, you, measure, you measure success by how much you've spent. You don't measure success by what you've achieved. You measure success by what you've spent. Uh, and uh, if, that's, if that's his measure, well, he's obviously been very successful because uh, the, the, the budget uh, has been, uh, uh, as Rex Hunt would have said, blown to the Scheisenhausen. Uh, and that's uh, very, very unfortunate, as I say, for, for generations, for generations to come. Uh, and, and I see uh, Mr Lean over there uh, re readily agreeing, readily agreeing with, uh, with my comments. The other thing about this budget is that it is almost entirely dependent on government spending uh, for our recovery. Now, again, again, you know, good old fashioned um, socialist economics uh, does not recognise that if we are to have a sustainable and, a, and a, uh, a vigorous recovery, the only way that's going to happen is with a strong business sector, a strong private sector. That is the only way that it's going to happen because governments don't create wealth. Governments, governments draw wealth, and well, it's just it's just around and around. You know, talk about your circular economy. Around and around you go. We we take the money to pay you, and and around and around you go. But the only way, the only way that we're going to have a, a strong, viable, and sustainable uh, state in the future is for uh, for businesses, particularly small business, um, to be um, uh, to, to be to be strong, to be vibrant, uh, to be exciting. Uh, that, that, is, that is the way, that is the way uh, of the future. And if we, are, if we are serious, if we are serious about Victoria's future um, and, uh, and we ignore small business, um, then, you know, the, the, the whole thing, the whole thing is, just, is just a joke. Uh, it, just, it just won't happen. And unfortunately, uh, spending uh, vast sums of money, putting us uh, uh, in debt, uh, as I say, for generations to come, uh, without accepting the importance um, of business, in employment, uh, in, you know, as I've said, as I've said uh, to this House on a number of occasions, you can't have, uh, you can't have union members um, if you don't have jobs. Uh, and uh, that might be the only thing that, um, and I see, I see Ms Terpstra over there, she's, uh, she's, she's cocked her head and she's, she's looking most interested when I mention union members, but, but that's, the fact, that's the fact of the matter. That's the fact of the matter. Without, without, without employers, you don't have employees, and without employees, you don't have union members. So, so members, members opposite might like, to keep that, uh, might like to keep that in mind. And I'll, and I'll just mention briefly that uh, the West is carrying a large cost a large cost uh, of this budget uh, through the uh, the toxic soil dump that is um, uh, that is coming our way, uh, perhaps in Bacchus Marsh. That, that's uh, a matter of conjecture. I, I note uh, at the moment with the EPA having done a somersault uh, this week, uh, but certainly at Ravenhall, which has copped more than its fair share over the years, uh, it seems that um, that that um, uh, that, that uh, uh, area will be um, blessed, if I can use that term, uh, with um, with more uh, toxic soil. Uh, and I notice, I note today, I received another letter from the uh, the mayor of Melton. Uh, 
expressing her very strong opposition uh, to, um, to dumping the toxic soil at Ravenhall. And of course, the other possibility and probability, in fact, is that uh, that, that soil will be dumped uh, uh, in, uh, in Sunbury Road between Buller and Sunbury. And that is just appalling for locals, and I speak from, uh, from personal experience there. Uh, look, this, this is a budget that is that is remarkable in the legacy that it will leave Victorians. We will be paying this debt for generations to come um, in, in, in many, many years, long after I have left and we've all left this parliament, we'll still be paying this debt. Victorians will still be paying this debt uh, when, I'm, uh, when I'm long in the ground. Um, they, they, you know, Victorians will still be paying this debt and we can look back and we can say, thank you, Daniel Andrews. Thank you for nothing. <laughs>